Hi, and welcome to this lesson. You're going to learn about dynamic blocks. Dynamic blocks are a way we can create reusable portions of code and do so dynamically. Kind of in the name, but it'll make more sense once you see a demo. Now I'm gonna say it right off from the bat if you know what they are. One of the things to be aware of, and one of the things they try and push in a certification is don't use it too much because it can actually make code more complex. Now with that said, let's jump into a demo. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm gonna call it dynamic. I'm also gonna to go to the modules folder and copy db.tf. The reason why is I need an EC2 instance to use and then paste it into dynamic. And go ahead and rename this. I'm gonna call it main.tf. And we could set something here like web server. One thing we'll also need to do is add our provider at the top. So set it to AWS, and I'm also gonna set the region equal to eu-west-2. Awesome. As mentioned before, dynamic blocks allow us to create chunks of reusable code. Now speaking quite honestly here, some people may find really good use cases for these. One of the things that strikes me as the most useful operation for dynamic blocks is security groups, because what we can do is set up ports in a dynamic block and make it really easy to use and edit. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start with two variables, one for ingress and one for egress. So do variable and I'll call this ingress underscore rules. And it's gonna be of type list and it's going to be of type number. And I'm gonna set the default equal to, and while we've got it like this, I'm gonna copy that and set egress. If you see this red squiggly line, it's not that it's an error, it's that the Terraform plugin doesn't support 0.12 syntax. So in here, we can add our rules. We might say it's a web server and we want a few things added. So we might say we want port 25, 80, 443, 8080, and 8443. As for egress, we might only want secure traffic out. So we could say 443 and 8443. And what we can do with dynamic blocks is create a security group using these variables. And again, we could have this in something like a TF files file, and each one could have a different environment. So production could have different values and a dev environment can have different values, but it's one central place to edit it. And rather than going through the entire security group block to then edit and change it, we can do it in one single location. So now let's go ahead and set up our dynamic block because this will make a lot more sense once you see it. So below our instance, what I'm gonna do is create another resource and this is AWS underscore security underscore group. And we're gonna call this web underscore traffic name. We're gonna set this equal to secure server. Now, if you're a network or a sysadmin and you've seen the security rules I've opened, I'm pretty sure you don't think this is a secure server. Let's digress. Now what we're gonna do is set up our dynamic block. So we type in dynamic, give it a name. So I'm gonna call this ingress. And it goes into curly braces. Next, we're going to set something called an iterator. And I'm gonna set mine equal to port. What it's gonna do is it's gonna go through this list we've set up. And the iterator is gonna be a placeholder. So it's gonna represent the position in the list. And if we want to do anything to the value inside that list at that position, we are gonna use our iterator. And you'll see how we'll do that very shortly. Next, we're going to loop through it. So we're gonna use four underscore each. And what we want to do is go through each element of that list. So var dot ingress underscore rules. Next up, we're gonna add a content block, put it in curly braces. And now we're gonna type in from underscore port equal to, and this is gonna be where we use our iterator. So as it goes through each list, what we want to do is get the value. So we'll do port dot value. So it's gonna go through and at this position, it's gonna get the value, so 25. And it's gonna set the from port equal to 25. We'll do two ports and we'll set that to port dot value. Say protocol equal to, and let's say TCP. 
and the cider blocks equal to, and we're going to set this to everything. And if you thought it was a secure server, this is just even less secure. Let's recap what we set up. So we set up a security group and with security groups, there are two blocks we can have, an ingress and an egress block. That's for traffic in and for traffic out. So inside our ingress block, what we've done is using every value in our list we've set up, and set the ports it's accessible from, the protocol and the IP addresses that can access it. Now this is a bit of a crude example, but it illustrates the point. This is gonna set up the access for us for our ingress. And what we can do is copy this block, paste it again, and we'll call it egress. Next, what we need to do is add our security group. So we're gonna type in security groups equal to, and these are a list. In this case, it's gonna be AWS underscore security underscore group dot web underscore traffic dot name. So it's the name of our security groups. I'll include a link to the documentation not only for the security group, so you can see how you can use ingress and egress blocks, but also to dynamic blocks, so you can have a look and see what use cases you might use it for. So now we've got all this set up, let's go ahead and give it a test. So let's go to our integrated terminal, cd into dynamic, and let's run first terraform init, Awesome. Next, let's go ahead and run Terraform plan. Awesome. Now what we can see here as I scroll up is the security group block we've set up. So we see the from port, the protocol, the to port, and the cider block. So what we've done in effect is taken all the code that would have been required to set this up and put it into two little statements like this. I mentioned it at the beginning, but one of the things they really try and push in the Terraform documentation is that yes, these are really powerful. Yes, they help keep our code neater, but no, we shouldn't use them too often. I think this is a really good example. And this is something I've used for setting up my ingress and egresses because I could just have my variable set in one location and it keeps the code a lot neater. And for example, if you have a from and to port and you edit one or miss the other, then that can cause all sorts of issues. So to have it in one centralized place, I think is a really good thing to do. And yes, there are other use cases where you can use dynamic blocks. I just think this is the best example because it makes much more sense as we can keep it much smaller and our code much neater. That wraps up this lesson on dynamic blocks. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. If you want to learn Terraform in depth with hands-on challenges and even get certified, make sure to go to warp-9.com.